Okay, so welcome back to another video. So we have a little um, algebra problem dealing with floor equations, and we want to solve for um, the real numbers x, satisfying the following. So we have the floor of x plus the floor of 2x plus the floor of 3x is equal to 1. So I actually cover a similar video of um, floor equations, but it was actually dealing with the, the arguments of the input is actually with rational functions. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave that link in the description below. But um, nothing is challenging in this sense because um, the way to solve for x is basically by utilizing the definitions of, um, you know, floor functions and you know just like the previous video that's actually pretty much the same method over here but however in this situation uh we actually have to deal with several cases because um because it hence because we have like three different terms dealing with you know the floor function itself so it's just something that we have to like carefully you know work around with especially now that we have that something's equal to one so you know units and um, it might be a bit of a challenge that's imposed from there. So we just have to, you know, work the right ways of using that definition of floor function. Just be careful how we, you know, manipulate things with equations, analyzing cases. And um, hopefully, well, we will um, figure out like what our solutions for X be such that it satisfies the following. So um, and nothing more to say. So let's just jump right in. Okay. So we know given with the floor of x, floor of 2x, and the floor of 3x. So if anything for reals of x, if you were to plug this in, we would guarantee to see that all these three terms are integers without question. However, this actually gives us some three cases that we need to analyze. So if I write the same thing again, so I'll have um, floor of x plus the floor of 2x, and then plus the floor of 3x, now, we know that this is equal to one, and we said that these three terms are integers, so we actually have a possible combination of um, sums that can give us the, you know, the number one. Uh, one way is to write this is we have that this is one plus zero plus zero. Another combination to write is we have zero plus one plus zero. And then another one is that we have um, zero plus zero plus one. And I'm gonna write some uh, a little note over here. So what we can analyze and say is that um, x can't be negative. Well, yes, um, x can't, yeah, x can't be negative. It cannot be negative because um, yeah, I just specifically said that. Um, so here, note. So cannot be negative. And that's simply saying that because if either um, if either the floor of x, the floor of 2x, and the floor of 3x, if they are negative, so that would have to mean that um, x would be negative. So that's a simpler way to say it. If these three terms are negative, then x is negative. And that would also have to mean that if x is negative, that would have to make two of the other terms negative as well. But if that was the situation of saying if all three of the terms are negative, it's impossible for it to actually equal one. So negative numbers are out of our you know discretion that we'd be choosing from. X is negative. Um, now I'll also write that all negative just to clarify. So all are, all are negative, all are negative. Then I'll write the implication that this it cannot equal one. So that means we have three different situations that uh, we need to analyze. So of course, three cases, as I mentioned. So we'll put it this way. I'll mark the um, in these three uh, stars the cases that we need to analyze. So case one, case two, case three. And so case one is that we want to see that uh, for our choices, we have that the floor of X is equal to one and then floor of two uh, is equal to zero and then floor of three X is equal zero. Uh, same thing over here. So instead floor of X is equal to zero, floor of two X is equal to one and then floor of three X is equal zero. Then the last case, case three, floor of X is equal zero, floor of two X is equal zero, and then floor of three X is equal to one. Okay, so we have these um, three cases we need to analyze, and then just from there, hopefully we will find some um, interval that such that 
and our, for our real numbers of x as it satisfies the following. So let's actually jump into that. So now first, case one, all right? So case number one, we have um, the floor of x is equal to one or two x is equal to zero. And I know I'm writing like things again, but this is good to reiterate, okay? So floor of x is equal one, floor of two x is equal zero, then floor of three x is equal to zero. Okay, so using that definition, we know that the floor of x is equal to one, so that would have to imply that one is uh, less than or equal to x, which is less than two, okay? Um, simply by definition of floor. So let's check out um, the floor of 2x. So floor of 2x is equal to zero, then implying that um, zero is less than 2x, which is less than one. Then if you can actually can further um, make this implication by dividing, dividing two to both sides. And so we would have that um, zero is less than x, which is less than one half or excuse me, um, less than or equal to x and then less than one half. Because we have a little bit of a problem here because we said that floor of x is equal to one, so it has to be between um, one and two, uh, inclusive for one. However, for this, we have that it falls between zero and one half, inclusive for zero. So this implies no solution exists. Now you can also check the same thing for, you know, um, floor of three X is equal to zero, but you don't really need to because I, we already just went over, you know, the contradiction between the two here. So no solution given. So that means um, in this case, this is an X. So there's nothing to be found over here. So that's done. Now we have case number two. So let me actually just um, underline these two, mark that as like, um, question mark uh, as, as a way to imply that um, there's a bit of there's an issue arising between these two so now next is case number two case two next is we have the floor of x is equal zero the floor of two x is equal one and then the floor of three x is equal zero we know that you know the floor of x is equal zero then that means it falls between zero and um, inclusive and has to be strictly less than one um, now let's actually go to um, move on to the 2x. So the floor of 2x equals one. So that would have to imply that one is less than or equal to 2x, less than two. But if we expand this out a little further and divide two to both sides of the compound inequality, we have that it's one half less than or equal to x, which is strictly less than one. Now let's take a look at um, the floor of 3x. Okay, 3x is equal to zero. Um, that would have to mean that zero is less than or equal to three X, which is less than one, implying that if you divide three to both sides of the, or to the, to the compound inequality, we have that this is zero less than or equal to X, which is less than one over three. However, there is a bit of a discrepancy over here because we have that X has to be between, um, zero and one third. And then we have that this is supposed to be, um, less than, um, less than or equal to one half less than one. So over here, this is a bit of a contradiction over here. And so further implying that with this conclusion of this case is that there are no solutions given. No solutions given. We put a um, plural over here as well. And so with that, then that means nothing can be said about um, case number two. So that's a big nope. So now let's move on to the final case. Case three, which is the floor of X is equal to zero the floor of 2x is equal to zero, and the floor of 3x is equal to one. All right, in this situation, if you can see that if you have two cases that's a no, then it's probably guaranteed that the final and the left case by trial of elimination has to work. But let's actually verify and check to see that indeed we have some interval that we can satisfy the following. So we know that the floor of x equals zero, then obviously this is supposed to be that zero is less than or equal less than or equal to x, which is less than one, okay? Uh, not much can be said from there, but we have to find out about the other two. 2x equals zero, then zero less than x, or excuse me, less than 2x, which is uh, less than or equal to 2x, which is less than one, saying that this is zero less than two, or excuse me, less than x, and then less than or equal to one half, right? Okay, and now we have the floor of three x, equals one so that means um one is less than or equal to three x which is less than two then we have 
um, dividing 3 to the compound equality, we have 1 over 3 less than or equal to, um, I wrote this backwards, that's supposed to be less than, and then that's equal to over here. Um, that's an x, and then over here is um, 2 over 3. This is interesting because 0, oh, zero we have this um, inequality here, which is more of the bigger interval. And then if we actually narrow this down, x is between um, 0 and 1 half, but we also have that this is between 1 third and 2 thirds. But now we see that thus there actually exists a solution. And if you actually combine the three equalities together using, you know, with logic tables, um, with the, you know, conjunctions and what you learn in proof writing, then you'll see that um, case three does work and that the solution is that x has to be strictly between, well, inclusive for the left side is one over three to one half non-inclusive. And so there we have it. We are actually done with our, um, we, are, we actually found our solution, our interval that actually satisfies the following. So you can actually even check for yourself, choose any number between one over three to one over two. Um, one over three is inclusive, of course. You can check any number in between this interval, uh, plug it into your equation and see that indeed that it actually does give that it's equal to one, no matter what X you choose in between here. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.